my name is Birdbrain, and today we are talking about Storyboard Pro. So to align with the celebrations of February, storyboardies, storyberry, that thing, it's a special event that invites people to do storyboarding. Uh, I will put more info into the description below, so check it out. Uh, this is very great because it appeals to storyboarders as well as non-storyboarder. So like, I'm not a storyboarder by trade, but uh, I'm gonna give this a go. So for the month of February, I'll be dedicating my channel to the art of storyboarding by showing you the basics of Storyboard Pro. So throughout the whole month, I'll have my tutorials focusing on that beautiful software. So Harmony can wait for a while. It'll be back in March, but for February, we're gonna explore this beautiful green software. So disclaimer, I am a Harmony power user for sure with lots and lots of experience behind me to back up whatever I say. Um, but I never worked as a storyboard artist for series or movies or something. So what I know about Storyboard Pro was taken from friends' advice and teaching it to multiple studios and other schools and freelancers and individuals. So I know the software really well and I'll be happy to show you around. But just don't ask me too many questions about how it is to storyboard in a production because I don't really know. But if you want more details on that, I have a beautiful interview that will also be linked in the description below. So today's video will be about panels because that's the basic of creating a storyboard. So first off, what you'll notice is that if you're a Harmony user already, learning Storyboard Pro will be a piece of cake because if you take a look at the drawing tools or like the toolbars and the way the windows are arranged it's pretty pretty similar to what harmony has so you have the same way to move your windows like this you can also collapse your little drawer like that to have more room which is usually what i do when i'm focusing on my drawing and you have the same loyal <laughs> tool properties view so just like harmony no matter what tool you take the tool properties will always show you the different features of that tool. So I have my select tool that contains my select by color arrow that is very useful. So the select tool is great to select individual strokes and the select by color is great also to select one color as a whole like that. And we also have our cutter that is very great. The great thing with the cutter in Storyboard Pro though that Harmony doesn't have yet is that if you have a cattail like that for example and you have a bunch of stripes the fun thing is that you can take your cutter, go here, and there's an option here called multiple lines cutting gesture. So if you activate it, you'll be able to cut multiple lines in one go, which is not something you can do in Harmony or in previous version of Storyboard Pro. This is just for uh, Storyboard Pro 20. So you can have it as just cutting the first line you touch, or you can set it to multiple line cutting gesture, which is great when you have this kind of details. And here you have your contour editor, which is basically the same as what you have in Harmony. Um, and most of the other features come back, so the centerline editor is there to edit your brush strokes. Here you have the brush, that is just your loyal brush tool. The same features that you have in Harmony to edit your brush, so lots of control, lots of power. Very interesting. Um, if you want to learn more about that, you can check out my video that I did on the subject in Harmony, because it's exactly the same in Storyboard Pro. So yeah, I won't need to redo this one. Yay! By the way, your brush that you make in Storyboard Pro or for Harmony are interchangeable, so you can load your Harmony brushes in there, uh, which is exactly what I do when I board. I use the brush that are on my gum roll. You can get them in the description below as well. But one thing that we have different is the stencil brush, which is something I will explain in a future video. We also have the pencil tool, we have the stamp tool, eraser tool, text tool. So all of these are pretty similar to Harmony. Where it starts to get different is after the layer transform. Since it's not an animation software, we have board specific tools such as uh, the camera animation and we can reframe stuff uh, we have the maintain size that is the same things as harmony and here we have create layer on surface so this is also something i will cover in a future video it allows you to snap a drawing on a 3d model and that will get very interesting when we get there all right so that's it for the basic tools they're pretty similar i hope you're gonna have fun drawing with this and now i'm gonna briefly talk about how to create your panels in storyboard pro because that's very interesting all right so let's talk about panels so first before creating a new panel i'm just gonna create a new scene so to create a panel or a scene you can just head over here this part here is where you control your panels so you have the option to create a new panel, a new scene, a new sequence, and here you have the smart add panel which is something I'm gonna cover today. Woo! And of course a duplicate selected panel. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. The way a storyboard is done is usually you have a panel, multiple panels together is usually a scene, multiple scenes together is a sequence. But now people are gonna tell me wait that's not the language I use. In my book it's panel, shots, and scene instead of sequence and that's totally fair uh, this is because nobody agrees on the terms ever so you can go to edit preferences and you can set your terminology style to live action or animation it all depends on what you use i will set mine to animation because that's what i learned so this is my first scene i'm just going to create another scene and i'm going to click on this button to add a new scene so what this will do is i have this scene here so it says scene one panel one on one 
here I have scene 2, panel 1 on 1. But if I go here and I press P to add new panels, for example, you'll see it's going to be 1 of 4, 2 of 4, 3 of 4, and 4 of 4. But it's the scene 2. One thing I prefer to do when I use Turbo Pro is to change the default color of my scenes. So I'm going to do that into my preferences here. And I'm going to go to colors. And I don't usually change colors inside software. But what I change is the scene group box color 1 and scene group box color 2. I usually set these to like pink <laughs> and blue. Just because it allows me to see them better when I do this here. So this is a scene and this is another one. So then if I go here and I create an extra scene, it'll do like pink, blue, pink. So each time you have a new scene, it's going to alternate colors. That's great. So I'm going to get rid of all of that now by just clicking on them and pressing on delete. All right, so what I'm going to do is create a very, very small scene here. I'll have a background and that background will be an amazing island in the ocean. So I have... So I'm going to draw a little island. To go to choose your color, you don't have the palette system. It's really just a bunch of sliders here that you can get your colors from. Very easy. If you want to add a new color here, you just press plus and it's going to be added here. So that'll be my beautiful island. I'm going to add a little tree. I'm going to change my colors. And I always add my colors because then I can just pick them to reuse them. And that's my BG. And, I'm, and I could draw a character, but I'm not going to draw my character directly on my background. So Furbo Pro has layers and we're going to cover the layers in a future video. But just so you know, it's important to have them uh, ordered. So yeah, you have your backgrounds and here the layer A is going to be my crab. And it's important that my layer A stays the crab throughout my, at least my scene, because some functions work with layer names across different panels. So what I can do now is uh, make a new panel, right? But instead of making a new panel and like copy pasting your background over and over, because if I take my background and I copy paste it to a new panel, it's great because then I can here like do something else with my crab. By the way, to alternate between panels, the shortcuts are A to go back and F to go in the future. So I'm going to draw my crab doing something else. But what if I have a retake and I need to change my background? Maybe the tree needs to be somewhere to the right. It means I'll have to change it on all my backgrounds, right? So don't do that. Don't just create a new panel. We're going to create a smart panel. So just go here, press on smart add panel. So what this will do is show you these two panels these two layers, BG and A. If I click on BG, it's going to make a new panel that will keep my artwork from BG, but not my artwork from A, like that. So that's already quicker than copy pasting, but even quicker than that, because this doesn't solve my retake problem. So even quicker than that, I'm gonna go my background, right click, and I'm gonna call that a share drawing. So share drawing will put a little asterisk near my background. It means that it's not part of my library. So we're gonna cover that later, but it's here in my library. And it means that if I now create a smart ad panel and I copy what my BG has, shared drawings means that it's the same drawing in both panels. So if I change that tree to something else, it's going to be changed on both panels. So that's how you share backgrounds across panel. This is, this is really a great feature. All right, so just as a reminder, keep your background on your background. Keep your A layer for like character A or something. So I'm going to put my crab here and he's like angry and stuff. And he gains volume, but it's okay because I can just change it like that. Perfect. And then if I want to add a new panel, I'm going to tell you again, you go here and you press on Smart Add Panel. And I want to keep my BG, but I don't want to keep the artwork of my layer A, so I will not click on it. By the way, depending on what your default layers are, you might or might not want to click on this. And then here I have my background's artwork and it's still a shared background, but my A layer is empty and ready for me to add my new crab drawing. All right, so that's how you create your panels in Storyboard Pro. Uh, don't worry about timing them for now. I'd say for this week, maybe just try to do some little thumbnails of what your future storyboard could look like. And in the following weeks, we will also talk about the different workspace that you have here. So this is the default panel workspace that is good to make your drawings. After that, you're going to go here in the timeline workspace to time them. And you can also use the horizontal workspace to populate your panels with like captions and stuff. So that's going to be fun, but we're going to do that in another way because we are already out of time. So uh, see you.